this is going to be bath time for my eight two-year-old box turtles. These two have beautiful plastrons. As you can see, they, uh, if I put it into focus, into frame, both turtles have uniquely colored plastrons. Carapaces are evenly growing with nice star patterns on both. These uh, two two-year-olds have uh, plastrons that are similar to but different than the others. It seems that with box turtles uh, the shades that are in some of their shells are you know, almost like a fingerprint. The uh, patterns on the bottom of that turtle are just unique I think to it. These two two-year-old box turtles, same group of hatchlings. This one here is uh, quite healthy, I think. Um, I've had her for two years now since she hatched. And uh, box turtles have this unique crease across the bottom of their plastron so that the bottom of their shell uh, can actually close. And as can the front, if they got scared, they would close up their shell. But these two turtles know that there's nothing to fear here, and that in a few minutes I'm going to feed them. Now, the last two of these two-year-old turtles right here are... Um, <laughs> look at their plastrons. They're completely different than those others. And this one has sort of a goldish with black spots in the middle. Nice. Uh, it, it, all these turtles have very strong shells. They eat lots of uh, calcium bones uh, with the fish that I feed them extensively. And uh, in a few minutes, the next video will have um, them <laughs> devouring fish. Well, it's feeding night at King's Corral. Here I have eight two-year-old ornate box turtles mixed with three-toed box turtles, I believe. And I'm going to transfer them into their feeding area over here. Here I have uh, koi, filet of koi, and uh, filet of carp mixed in with oyster shell and mealworms. You can see some of the mealworms moving in now. I'm going to move them from this area to there and see, whoop, <laughs> see how they respond to it all. Get another one. I'm trying to just keep the camera focused in the right general direction. I'll just keep piling them in. Here's the smallest one. Okay. Look, let's see. Oh, look, he gets some nice. This is certainly a beautiful uh, shell pattern. This one's almost is golden in color. They're not used to having as much light, but they don't seem to care at all. <laughs> they're just looking like they're concentrating on what they want to do. There's more than enough food here. Is the ones that are most eager to get food get what they want. The others will follow in behind. It works out really good in the feeding area. area here at the other end where they have about an inch and a half of water. And, uh, 
This works out really good. You get all the food eaten pretty well. I don't see them chomping down on the oyster shell selectively, but uh, you know, sometimes you get it by mistake. Uh, it seems like it's almost by mistake, but they pretty much have survived for a long, long time on the face of Earth. And, uh, they are very successful creatures, even though they appear all primitive and ignorant. What they've done is uh, survived on Earth, possibly, according to what I think, longer than humans. That humans are not related to turtles at all. You know, I see so many differences between this animal. You know, like when you just look at it on the outside, you think, well, could be a distant uncle or grandfather, but nah. Anyway, this is just a little short paper with the other out there chasing after each other with pieces of food in their mouth. That one has a mealworm. He's just happy as a clam. Clams are supposed to be happy. They just stay in the mud all day. <laughs> left feeding right now. Yeah, there's the bees off. Mm. Even this one has decided he'd rather just wade around in the water. This is the only guy left pretty close. He's chewing on something right now. Ah, this guy's coming in for seconds so. now. They're pretty active. I think they really enjoy being inside in the winter time. But this is the last uh, time winter goes by and they don't uh, have to hibernate with their brothers, sisters, and mothers out there in the outside enclosure. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little short video, sort of a feeding, feeding video. Can't get over how beautiful their shells are. Uh, I don't know if you uh, can see it adequately online, but even with my color vision, uh, it just looks, they're just beautiful. And uh, each one is different, and uh, I'm not going to try to artificially incubate turtle eggs anymore. If they decide to hatch in the pond enclosure, or outside enclosure, in the spring or fall, I will take, get, provide them food and a place that they can hibernate, but I'm not going to do anything beyond just hibernating them over and then the next year providing them food. So that's my plan. Anyway, turtles are my hobby. If you have any questions about oh, turtles or fish or just about anything, I get back and forth to my YouTube channel on occasion and um, I answer questions and I am not an expert. I just have over 50 years of experience. I've killed uh, at least a half a dozen turtles by not taking care of them properly when I was a child about 50 years ago. There just simply wasn't the uh, internet connections that they have now to uh, learn about some particular hobby so you don't have to you know, torture and kill little red ear slider turtles. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to answer any questions that you might have and uh, share this one with anybody you want on YouTube with people that like you know, reptiles you know, and fish and stuff, not like puppy dogs and cats, but like something just for its incredible um, survival capabilities and how it uh, doesn't look like it's the most fit animal in the whole world. I mean, you can, if their shell is like that, yeah, sure, you can tap it on a dog and it doesn't hurt it. You know, and these turtles here, they just got a hard shell. And they don't mind. I mean, like, it's just a miracle that they have survived on Earth so long. And I hope you enjoyed the video.